Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with the updated list for the SRAM Senior Edificer uh, Weapon Crafts Enthusiast, or not Weapon Crafts Enthusiast, Weapons Trainer, that's the card, uh, equipment deck that I have been messing around with. Now, I did an update on this when the SRAM Senior Edificer was spoiled, and the list had a bunch of Smuggler's Copters in it, so I thought I'd change this up without Smuggler's Copters. Not a lot of cards, I think, go too well in this deck uh, f as far as upgrades from the A3 Volt, but I think that, that SRAM himself is a very, very good up upgrade because it does make your Bone Saws and Inventor's Goggles and even Captain's Claws much better as they do draw you a card. Uh, we're going to run three of the SRAMs in the deck. I'm going to run a one of Heart of Quran as well, because I do think that Heart of Quran is pretty good in this deck, because we do have Toolcraft Exemplars and Weapons Trainer, as well as the Scrap Heat Scrounger. All of them can crew the Heart of Quran quite well. And I, I'm still thinking that Reckless Bushwhacker is probably the right card to put in this deck. I had the Servo Exhibition, but Reckless Bushwhacker just allows the one drop and a two drop into and equipment into Reckless Bushwhacker turn 3 play that can dish off a ton of damage. And then we can go the long route through cards like the Captain's Claw and the Scrap Each Scrounger combo. Uh, this one's really good because the Scrap Each Counter can be put back into play uh, end of turn and then equipped to a Captain's Claw. And then you're attacking in for uh, at least 5 damage the next turn. Uh, which gets you back out of like board wipes. This deck is incredibly good at coming back from like the Yahini's Expertise or Radiant Flames. And why I think that this is pretty well positioned right now in the metagame is a lot of decks are going over to Black Blue or Esper Control because those are both extremely good decks against the Green Black Snake. Uh, the Green Black Snake deck is kind of slow. They don't have a 1-drop. They try to go 2-drop and a 3-drop and a 4-drop and a 5-drop. And so if you can mess up their curve with like Grass of Darknesses or any other removal-based spell, take out their, their snake early, then the deck is kind of clunky. So I, I don't think that this deck particularly has the greatest matchup versus the Snake deck because the Walking Ballista is a very, very good card against uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, plus, Shock doesn't kill most of the things in their deck, so I don't think we'd want to bring in removal. So it's, yeah, So I think that this is like, in when we explain the metagame, there are different ways to attack it. A is you build a deck that beats the, the current strongest deck, and B, you build a deck that beats the deck that beats the strongest deck. Or C, you just try to find like a, an overall decent deck that has the best win percentage against the field. So right now we're going to go with like the strategy B. We're going to try to, to beat the deck that beats the deck. So a lot of, like I said, black-blue control, the uh, crazy cat combo, all of those are pretty big at the moment. And I think that this can go under the radar just because it's a very, very quick deck. Your opponent is not going to have a lot of uh, time to really get get established here. I'm actually thinking of putting the the uh, the two mana gain control of a creature with power four or less because I think that also works very well in the deck that the uh, the snake deck as most of their cards are going to be under that four power. Like taking control of a walking of course, taking control of Walking Ballista, they'll sack it in response. But taking control of, like, a snake, for example, that's been pumped up, or a... They do run, like, the Grim, the Grim Flayers, and a bunch of a bunch of two and three drops, so I still think within that level, you'll be able to, to gain control of it and swing in. And that could be the difference of taking a blocker and swing in for lethal. So just keep that in mind, that that definitely is an option. Uh, so I've done this deck multiple, multiple times on the channel. The, the whole theory of it is to drop a one drop into one of the two drop lords, which is Stonehaven Outfit or a Weapons Trainer, uh, into a equipment on turn three, whether it be Captain's Claw or Bone Saw, and then they get pumped up, all of your creatures get pumped up by the two lords, and then you just start beating in for so much damage. So it does run similar to, to Red White Vehicles, except that it's more explosive and doesn't have like the progression that you see. So we're running a very, very low land count, which is Aether Hubs, Concealed Courtyards, Inspiring Vantages, and two Needle Spires. The reason being Needle Spires are kind of awkward in a 20-card deck. You're never going to reanimate it. So these are just our only comes into play tap land. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of 
Uh, these pseudo comes into play tap lands, which inspiring vantage and concealed courtyards on turn four will come into play tapped. The hub is also kind of awkward sometimes when you have to use energy early, but we do have a lot of colorless cards and basically the only card that requires multiple uh, mana is the weapons trainer. So that's just really the gist of it. The sideboard I've kept the exact same sideboard I had with Harness Lightning, sh uh, Shocks Replace Galvanic Bombardment because they can go to the face. Uh, Thalia Heretic Cathar is very good at, at shutting down the Crazy Cat Lady combo. They have to kill it before it can go off. Um, the Selfless Spirits are good against uh, Radiant Flames. Very good against shutting down Radiant Flames. And then Declaration Stone is just a flex card versus uh, cards like Kalitas. This is you definitely bring it in versus that. Again, I haven't looked too much into some of the other upgrades that can be looked at for Aether Revolt. I didn't wasn't too impressed with a lot of the equipment, the uh, vehicles that were introduced. One of Heart of Kron's fine. I don't think you ever want to see more than one, uh, but it can be a nice beater on turn number two. The most likely turn number three, you absolutely will be able to crew it, and it has the the vigilance, so you can actually crew and then crew, and it can it's it's gonna have those moments when this this completely takes over the game. So the only thing we really need to test is how explosive reckless bushwhacker is gonna be in this deck. If not, we can probably take a reckless bushwhacker out for either another inventor's goggle or a servo exhibition. I still do like the servo exhibition because it does. Uh, have that scenario where you create the two tokens and then Reckless Bushwhacker and swing in for a ton of damage. You swing in for six damage. And that's really good after a board wipe. A lot of times you've got your opponent down to uh, single digit numbers and you just need something to close it out. So anyway, that's the theory of this deck. We'll try to play some games. Uh, probably live stream it. I'm not sure if I'll, I'll play like one game and then we'll, maybe we'll live stream some some uh, weapons trainer. Not sure when that's going to happen. Busy week for me, but we'll try to try try for like a Sunday night or something like that to live stream some some gameplay with the weapons trainer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this list. This is Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.